Now before we get into the video, I do want to say a massive thank you to today's video sponsors and once again that is JerseyFIFA.com. They really do help keep the content on this channel going and they even sent me a free shirt which you can see on screen here. And as you can see, I got the new Manchester United home kit and genuinely the kit really really is top quality. I highly recommend their product. So make sure to get in a link in the description down below and now if you use code JerseyFIFA at checkout, you'll get 10% off your order. You get a great football shirt and you help support the channel, which I really do appreciate massively. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel, where again we are covering the Champions League today. And again we have a game that on paper looked like a really good spectacle. But just quickly, before we get into the video, if I sneeze, I can only apologise. My allergies have got me on the ropes today. Hopefully we'll be alright and hopefully I'll be able to edit it out anyway. Just a little heads up for you guys so I don't, um, you know, make you jump. But anyway, Real Madrid versus RB Leipzig, and let's just get straight into it and talk about the tactics. And both teams set up exactly how we would have expected. Real Madrid in their 4-3-3 under Ancelotti, and then RB Leipzig under their new manager Marco Rose playing a 4-2-3-1 shape. And actually, I think we'll start with when Leipzig had the ball. Because they did see a decent amount of the ball in this game, which we may not have expected. Yes, Real Madrid did dominate, as we'll come on to see. But like I said, Leipzig had a fair share of possession. And when they had it at the back, let's get the ball in here with the goalkeeper. Real Madrid looked to press in quite an interesting shape. It was almost a bit of a 3-2 like this. With Vinicius Jr. pushing up front with Rodrigo to press the centre-backs. And then Camavinga, Modric and Valverde then on that next line in the midfield. However, Leipzig were quite happy to either play wide to obviously get around it. Or just to completely bypass it, go long and then get on the second ball and play from there. In those situations where they were able to kind of play the ball long and then get on the second ball, we saw quite an interesting shape from them. And I watched them last weekend and what we saw in that game was that the fullbacks were very attacking, bombing forward. But in this game I think they were very aware of the threat that Real Madrid posed on the counter-attack. Particularly with Vinicius Jr. and I think it's reasonable to be worried about that threat. So as a result what we saw was Simakan not really pushing forward too much. And he was often kind of holding a position almost in a back three alongside centre-backs. We would then see Haidara in here and Schlager sometimes in here but also around uh, left-back was given the licence to push much further forward. And we can see this now gives Leipzig either a 3-1 shape with Haidara or a 3-2 shape with Schlager. Um, and this gave them a pretty solid base to build possession. Now we know that Real Madrid under Ancelotti aren't a team that really commit too high to the press. So in these situations, they were quite happy for Leipzig to have the ball. Leipzig weren't really going anywhere too troubling with it initially, and it allowed them to get a foothold in the game to start to build some possession. And then from here, one of the better players for them was Forsberg. Now we know that Forsberg is a very technical, uh, technically gifted player, but also a very intelligent player. And he naturally wanted to drift kind of into this pocket of space on the left-hand side. And as a result, this meant this is where Leipzig fo focused their attacks. They had quality on the right in Soboslai, they weren't really interested in using that and he kind of struggled to get into the game at times because they wanted to focus down his left hand side where we saw some nice little rotations. Forsberg would often drop deep, let's say, oh wrong thing, let's say Schlager had the ball here. We would see Forsberg drop deep, get the ball in here. We would then see Nkunku come inside and really narrow where we know he likes to play and then Ram pushing forward from left back. And this created some nice little chances for them. I thought Nkunku showed some bright moments. Forsberg really impressed. But actually, importantly, what it done was it allowed Timo Werner to get the ball in pockets of space. And I thought he was the best player on the pitch last night. Particularly for probably 60 minutes, I thought he looked the most threatening player with quick feet in these areas. Unfortunately, he just didn't quite have that finishing touch with the finish. And that was the issue for Leipzig. They found it reasonably easy to progress the ball down this left-hand side. Sometimes it would be Schlager stepping forward into these areas and Forsberg would be over the other side. But either way... They found it quite easy to progress the ball. I just think one thing they didn't do enough was really get the ball wide to Ram and then swing crosses into the box. Now, there were a few occasions when they got him on the ball, but if you kind of look in the centre, Timo Werner isn't much of a target. I think Leipzig could have done with more of a presence in the box to aim for. I think as you expect when you play Timo Werner up front, Leipzig also had a massive threat on the counter-attack as well. So if they were able to win a ball off someone like Rodrigo or Modric in the midfield and then pounce forward, Timo Werner was a constant threat. And I think what we saw in this game was that Tony Rudiger isn't quite as suited to playing in a back four as what he is a back three. Because without that one extra centre-back, it doesn't allow him to be quite as proactive and aggressive. And Werner was able to take, um, take advantage of that. 
His quick feet were brilliant, his dribbling was really good, and like I said, he got into really dangerous positions. I think Chouameni deserves credit for Real Madrid, because he kind of tracked back and covered the situation well. Rudiger just about often did enough, but the threat was certainly there. Timo Werner was a fawn in the side of this Real Madrid team for the whole game, and like I said, I think he was the most threatening player on the pitch. Perhaps somewhat reminiscent of his Chelsea days though, he just didn't quite have that finishing touch. He couldn't connect with a shot, or he didn't quite have enough support in the final third. There was one brilliant situation where they created a chance for Nkunku, who couldn't quite get on the end of it. And that was kind of the story for Leipzig. They carried plenty of attacking threat, but they got opportunities rather than chances. So they were getting into positions where it could lead to something, but they didn't quite get that final pass right, which then means they didn't get a chance because they couldn't get the shot off. So... Decent for Leipzig in possession, but as we'll now see, Real Madrid perhaps just slightly better, perhaps slightly more quality when it was needed. Now time to talk about Real Madrid, and apologies if you can hear a drone in the background, there's some work going on, can't do much about it. But anyway, when Real Madrid had the ball, as we'd expect, they wanted to play out from the back and kind of take control of the game. They did have most of the possession in this game, but Leipzig looked to put them under pressure, which is what we expect from these German sides. And they'd done it kind of using a 4-2-3-1, or a bit of a 4-2-2. And basically, Forsberg and Werner would kind of pivot around like this, constantly making sure that they had too many marked. So let's say uh, Nacho had the ball here, Forsberg would push forward, and then Werner would drop in on too many. The ball could then go across to Rudiger, Werner would come out, and Forsberg would drop in again on too many to try and stop him getting on the ball. And early on, this worked because we can see that Carvajal isn't really an option either because of Nkunku, and Alaba isn't because of Sabotsai. However, there was one little interesting pattern that kind of allowed them to get out of this, and it's quite interesting. So they could go wide to the fullback like this. Now, like I said, the forward pass isn't on because Nkunku's there. But if, it just dragged the Leipzig press over a little bit. And then it leaves the winger on the far side with a decision to make. So let's say Chouameni comes over, Forsberg follows him. If Carvajal gets the ball in here and then goes to Nacho, it kind of leaves the winger kind of caught in between three different areas. They don't know whether to cut the pass to Kamavinga, to cut the pass to Alaba, to press the ball, and at times it leaves the player a little bit in no man's land. And this was an opportunity for Real Madrid to then progress the ball forward. They could just catch out that player not being quite on it, and then play forward from there. Uh, the other option was for them to overload the centre of the pitch. Now the way that they done this was, let's just put Leipzig back in their pressing shape. So the way that Real Madrid were able to outnumber in the middle of the pitch was by getting Kamavinga to drop a little bit deeper, and... He's more than comfortable doing that, it's probably where he's best actually. And he would just drop into this area here. And again it leaves Leipzig having to make decisions. Haidara isn't entirely sure whether he should follow or stay deep. And then also with Rodrigo dropping deep from up front and Modric pushing forward, we can see that uh, see now that Real Madrid have essentially got themselves a box. A box of four midfielders in the middle, and if we compare it to Leipzig, they only have the three. And... You know, no prizes for who can guess what happens here. It allows Real Madrid to dominate, take control, and get players in pockets of space. And actually what we particularly saw was Rodrigo and Modric dropping, yes, deep, but also quite wide as well. So they weren't looking to play in this area here. They were looking to get either side of the midfielders. And this is actually how they progressed the ball the most effectively. And eventually it kind of caused Leipzig to drop off a little bit, but still they couldn't really get close. And it allowed them to get the ball into these areas here, into Rodrigo, into Modric, and then Leipzig are obviously retreating, and the easy pass is now the winger. And this was kind of the story of the game. Real Madrid could get the ball this far reasonably easily. Yes, there was a few little changes in shape that we've seen, but then it allowed them to get the ball into these areas. Now the job was on the wingers. And I thought Valverde done a decent job down the right wing. Um, not the most technical of dribblers, he would kind of knock the ball and then run past, and I really enjoyed his battle up against the fullback. And then Vinicius on the other side, all night long, it felt like the quality was going to come from Vinicius. And Vinicius is one of those players that we know can be a bit frustrating at times. There's times when he takes players on and just gets it horribly wrong. But he's that good that you just persist with it. Because eventually he will create something. And we did see that for the goal. We'll talk about that in a second. But for Real Madrid, it just felt like Vinicius was the only hope. Of course, there was no Benzema up front. So they kind of lacked that natural striker. There was just something not quite right with this Real Madrid team. They could get so far, they could dominate the ball, they could progress it reasonably well. But then there was just a quality, so even if Vinicius could beat his man down the line, who has he then got to aim for in the box? No one really. Typically Benzema would be in this area, but Rodrigo didn't really want to do it. 
Now in the second half we did see Rodrigo push a little bit higher and that did play a key part because it then left space for others and that's what we saw for the goal so let me let's talk about the goal now. So this is the first goal here and Vinicius Jr has the ball on the left wing and what we can see is that Rodrigo does now have a higher starting position and Vinicius kind of takes his man on once if not twice here. Actually I'll start on pitch too soon. Hang on. So Vinicius starts here, he kind of takes on his man, we can see Rodrigo up in the box here, just on the edge. Vinicius takes on his man, cuts, comes back, and then gets towards the edge of the box. So initially, that's that good play from Vinicius. Again, we can see that he hasn't necessarily got a ton of targets to aim for in the box. However, at least Rodrigo is further forward than what he was in the first half. And what it does is it leaves space on the edge here. Because Rodrigo is initially dropping deep and then making the run forward, it drags midfielders. Whereas if he had just started high, he'd have been occupying centre-backs. So it allowed him to kind of occupy more players, and we can see the likes of Forsberg, Schlager, players like that, dropping into these deep areas, and it leaves a massive gap here. Vinicius notices that, plays the ball across, to Federico Valverde, who drives forward into the box, kind of does a fake shot here, turns, gets the ball onto his left foot, and bends the ball into the far post, as you would have seen in the thumbnail. A really, really impressive finish, and... Valverde just goes from strength to strength. Like I said, I thought he was decent with his dribbling. As always, he worked hard. He shuttled the ball forward well and was probably their best player. I think Vinicius always had the biggest threat, but Valverde was the most consistent throughout the game. However, it was Vinicius that provided the quality and the vision with the pass. That was the difference in this game. And then Valverde had the quality to bend it past the keeper. Then to the second goal, a free kick very late on in the game. And this is just speed of thought. There's nothing particularly tactical about this. This is clever players. Tony Cruz notices the run of Asensio on the edge of the box. He plays it along the floor and then Asensio with an absolutely gorgeous finish. A really, really nice finish and that gave Real Madrid the 2-0 lead. And it was a bit of an interesting game. Probably not the most exciting you'll ever see. Tactically, we didn't really see the teams manipulate each other or adjust too much during the game. And it, left, it led to quite a flat game. This wasn't... An exciting Champions League game. Yesterday we were talking about Bayern versus Barcelona. In that game we saw a lot of attacking quality. Perhaps just that final shot was missing. But it was still a lot of quality and technical players. In this game it just felt like we were lacking something. Perhaps that something was Karim Benzema. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But either way Real Madrid were able to get the 2-0 win. Back to back wins in the Champions League without playing too well yet. It's a good start to the group stage. And I think they'll be confident now that they've progressed from here. And I think probably what we saw last season as well is that they will grow as the competitions as the seasons go on. And of course, when Benzema is back in the team, when Militao is back in the team, when Chouameni is more settled, things like that. This wasn't Real Madrid at their best, but they didn't need to be at their best. And they punished Leipzig in those two moments. If this was a draw, no one could have complained. But Real Madrid took full advantage of their moments of quality and got the 2-0 win. And that was what they needed. This is tournament football. The wins are the most important thing, not the performances. And Real Madrid done enough. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. What did you think of this game? For me, I was a little bit disappointed and a little bit underwhelmed. However, if you're a Real Madrid fan, you've got to be reasonably happy because you got a 2-0 win. If you're a Leipzig fan, what do you think of life under Marco Rose so far? Just let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.